power grid just died forever. Your smartphones, a brick. The grocery store, looted clean in 90 minutes by soccer moms wielding shopping carts like battle axes. Water stopped flowing four hours ago. The government's emergency broadcast cut to static three hours back. And congratulations, <laughs> genius. You're now living in a real life episode of The Walking Dead, minus the zombies. Though honestly, the living are infinitely worse. Here's your reality check. 97% of people will be fertilizer within 30 days. Not from radiation, not from mutant cockroaches, from pure, concentrated stupidity. They'll die fighting over the last bag of Doritos while dehydrating to death. But not you, because today you're getting a masterclass in post-apocalyptic science 101, taught by someone who's watched enough Discovery Channel to know that Bear Grylls drinks his own piss for ratings, not survival. Our class motto? Simple. Adapt, improvise, survive, or become someone else's lunch. You've got 72 hours before desperation turns your suburban neighborhood into the Thunderdome. Max Rakitansky wishes he had your problems. Here's your survival breakdown delivered with all the warmth of a Terminator explaining why you're about to die. Water, the liquid gold rush. First brittle truth. Stop being picky about taste. Your refined palate died with Starbucks. Your tongue isn't making executive decisions anymore. Your kidneys are, and they're pissed. Find any water source, puddles that look like chocolate milk, car radiators, that sketchy pond behind the abandoned Wendy's, rain gutters, bird baths. I don't care if it's got more floating debris than a garbage truck explosion. Step one, pre-filtration. Strain everything through cloth, t-shirt, coffee filter, your neighbor's designer pillowcase that they're definitely not using anymore. This removes the chunky bits that'll make you projectile vomit like you're auditioning for The Exorcist. Layer different materials. Cloth removes big particles, sand removes smaller ones, charcoal removes chemicals and bad tastes. It's like building a water treatment plant in a coffee can, except OSHA isn't coming to inspect. Step two, thermal purification. Boiling water isn't just cooking, it's chemical warfare against microscopic enemies. Heat denatures proteins, which is science speak for cooking germs until they're dead. Get any container, aluminum can, glass bottle, that expensive Le Creuset Dutch oven you got for Christmas and never used. Heat kills bacteria, viruses, parasites, and probably your mother-in-law's criticism. No thermometer, no problem. When bubbles form at the bottom and rise to the surface, that's 212 degrees Fe at sea level. Physics doesn't lie, even when your politicians do. Boil for at least one minute. Three minutes if you're above 6,500 feet because altitude is a cruel mistress. The grim reality. You can survive three days without water. After that, you're basically a sentient raisin with delusions of grandeur and a rapidly failing kidney system. Food. Scavenging like a post-apocalyptic foodie. Forget your Instagram food photos and your gluten-free lifestyle. We're entering full fallout mode where a can of beans is currency and expired milk is a biological weapon. Canned goods are your metal treasure chests. Dented? Fine. The food's still good. Rusty exterior? Probably okay if the interior isn't compromised. Swollen or bulging? Hard pass. That's botulism saying hello, and it'll kill you faster than a Game of Thrones character with a speaking role. The expiration date? Corporate lies designed to make you buy more. Canned food lasts literally years past expiration. Trust your nose. If it smells like a zombie's armpit, don't eat it. If it smells normal, congratulations. Dinner served. Wild plant identification, Russian roulette with chlorophyll. If you don't know what it is, don't eat it. But here's the universal edibility test, nature's cruel SAT exam. First skin test, rub plant on your wrist, wait 15 minutes. No reaction, move to lips, wait 15 minutes. Then tongue tip, wait. Then chew and spit, wait. Then swallow tiny amounts. It's like dating, but with potentially fatal consequences. Avoid anything with milky sap, three-leaved patterns, or berries that look too perfect. Mother Nature didn't make poisonous plants ugly by accident. Protein sources. The crunchy truth. Insects are 80% protein and 100% disgusting to your pampered Western sensibilities. Get over it. Grasshoppers, crickets, ants, beetle larvae. They're basically land shrimp that don't require melted butter. Remove wings and legs first. They're like eating razor wire seasoned with regret. Roast them over fire until crispy. They taste like nutty chicken if chicken lived in dirt and made annoying chirping sounds on night. Earthworms. Purge them in clean water for 24 hours, then boil. They're protein tubes with a texture of disappointed expectations. Urban hunting. Welcome to the concrete jungle. Pigeons are flying rats, but rats are actually edible. Catch them if you can. Cook thoroughly. They carry more diseases than a medieval plague ship. Fish from urban ponds are probably contaminated, but starvation trumps heavy metal poisoning every time. It's a mathematical equation. Certain death from hunger versus possible death from toxins. 
Choose wisely. Fire, your prehistoric life insurance. Fire equals life. No fire means you're basically an expensive Neanderthal with worse survival instincts and a social media addiction you can't feed. Friction methods, ancient technology for modern disasters. Find dry wood, soft wood for the baseboard, hard wood for the spindle. Physics lesson, friction generates heat, heat creates tinder temperature, tinder becomes ember, ember becomes your salvation. Bow drill method, string around a stick, spin like your life depends on it, because it literally does. The friction creates wood dust that heats up. When it starts smoking, you're cooking with science. Hand drill method, same principle, but you're the motor. Spin a straight stick in a groove until physics saves your pathetic hide. Your soft hands will blister. Deal with it. Flint and steel, sparks of hope. Strike steel against flint or any hard rock. Sparks are tiny pieces of hot metal, iron particles burning in oxygen. Aim them at char cloth or dry tinder. It's like magic, but with actual scientific principles. No flint? Use concrete, quartz light, or any hard stone. No steel? Knife blade, file, or any iron tool works. Desperation makes engineers of us all. Chemical fire starting. Modern solutions for ancient problems. Hand sanitizer burns beautifully. Thank the alcohol content. Squeeze it onto tinder. Light with any spark. It's like napalm, but legally purchased at CVS. Petroleum jelly and cotton balls make excellent fire starters. The jelly burns slow and hot. The cotton provides surface area. Roll them together, light one end. It'll burn for minutes. Battery and steel wool. Touch jumper cables to steel wool from a car battery. The electrical resistance creates heat. Steel wool ignites instantly. Just don't electrocute yourself. Dead people don't need fire. The fire triangle, your scientific holy trinity. Heat, fuel, oxygen. Remove any one, fire dies. Too much wind kills it, not enough air suffocates it. Too little fuel starves it, too much fuel smothers it. Fire is like a needy relationship. It requires constant attention and the right balance. Tools, MacGyver's greatest hits collection. Everything's a tool when you're desperate enough to think creatively and stupid enough to try dangerous things. Cutting implements, sharp solutions for dull problems. Knives from broken glass, find thick pieces, wrap one end in cloth for a handle, sharpen on concrete. It'll cut, and it's replaceable when it breaks. Sharpen metal. Car parts, fence pieces, or even credit cards can be honed to an edge. Scrape against concrete, rocks, or any abrasive surface until it'll slice paper. Can lid knives. Open a can carefully, leaving a sharp edge. Wrap in cloth. It's disposable cutlery with murderous potential. Weapons. When diplomacy fails spectacularly. A pointy stick beats bare hands every time. Physics, concentrated force over a small area equals penetration. Sharpen wood by scraping against rocks or concrete. Slings from cloth can launch rocks with devastating accuracy. David killed Goliath with one, and Goliath wasn't even a desperate apocalypse survivor hopped up on expired energy drinks. Clubs from any heavy object attached to a handle. Physics again, mass times velocity equals kinetic energy. More energy equals more damage. Containers and storage, liquid asset management. Plastic bottles, aluminum cans, glass jars, anything that holds liquid is now precious. Make funnels from cut plastic bottles, storage from anything with a lid, measuring cups from containers with known volumes. You're now a post-apocalyptic Tupperware party host. Rope and cordage, binding the chaos together. Twist fabric strips together, braid for strength. Suddenly, you're a textile engineer with a specialty in desperate improvisation. Plant fibers work too. Inner bark from trees, dried grass twisted together. Our ancestors did this for thousands of years before Home Depot existed. Shelter. Architecture for the desperate. Weather kills faster than humans. Sometimes. Hypothermia doesn't negotiate or take prisoners. Location strategy. Real estate in hell. High ground gives you visibility and drainage. Low ground provides concealment and wind protection. Choose your poison based on whether you're hiding from humans or nature. Near water, but not in flood zones. Near resources, but not near obvious scavenging sites where other desperate people will come looking. Insulation principles. Thermodynamics for dummies. Insulation works by trapping air. Air is nature's insulator. Newspapers, cardboard, leaves, clothing. Anything that creates air pockets between you and the cold. Layer everything. Multiple thin layers beat one thick layer. It's like wearing an onion costume, but for thermal regulation instead of making people cry. Basic shelter construction. Engineering with sticks. Lean-to structures. Diagonal pole against a tree or rock. Smaller branches laid against it. Cover with leaves, bark, or any materials that shed water. Debris huts. Framework of sticks. Piled debris on top until it's thick enough to maintain warmth. You're building a human-sized bird nest.
A-frame shelters, two supports, ridge pole, angled sides, cover thoroughly. It's like camping, but without the romantic notions or s'mores. Urban shelters, concrete jungle survival, abandoned buildings, cars, subway tunnels, drainage pipes. Just remember, you're not the only genius who thought of this. Expect company, and not the friendly kind. Check for structural integrity. Avoid places that might collapse. Getting crushed by debris is a stupid way to die, even in an apocalypse.